Hi, my name is Frank Schaefer. I am a writer and a painter. Sitting in my studio in my bathrobe, having just finished painting this morning, I tend to work in the morning, and um, getting ready to take a walk with a th three of my, my five grandchildren. But before I get up and shower and shave and go out, I just wanted to share something with you, and that is that I've been talking to people in the media and other folks who are in politics, and they all ask me the same question, and it goes something like this. Frank, your background was in the religious right. Your father was a religious right leader. Can you explain to us why Trump's most unwavering support comes from evangelical Christians who say they follow Jesus, whose teaching seems to go across everything Trump is, from his arrogance to his lies to his divisiveness and all the rest of it? End question mark. Close quotes. And I think it's instructive to point out a couple of things. First of all, it's pretty much beyond debate that Trump is mentally unstable and unfit to be president as such. It's also beyond debate that his own lifestyle of philandering, groping women, sexual assault, bragging about it, three marriages, immense amounts of womanizing that he bragged about on shows like Howard Stern's radio show would all be dismissed as filthy living and satanic by evangelicals when it would involve anybody else, say their own pastor, who they would fire instantly if he was caught doing a tenth of these things. And then you come to the racial divisiveness and the outright support for the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and others. That's easier to explain because a lot of white evangelicals are racist. They come from a movement that was in the forefront of segregation, was in the forefront of starting white schools to get around integration of public schools and so forth. But that said, there are millions of white evangelicals who are not racist and who welcome people of other races to our midst. For instance, their brothers and sisters in Christ who are Hispanic in the Pentecostal movement. So that begs the question, why out of that 81% vote from white evangelicals are the core of the core still hanging in with him. And I think what a lot of secular people who question me don't understand is that if Trump is delusional, it's no accident that his core support are the most delusional and mentally unfit people in America. And that is religious fanatics of all stripes, fundamentalists of all kinds. This kind of fundamentalism isn't limited to America. In India, for instance, there are fundamentalist nationalist Hindus murdering Muslims because they say that some Muslim ate some beef or killed a cow. And in Israel, the, the fundamentalist Orthodox Jews there are circling the wagon and essentially trying to turn that state into a kind of an apartheid state where Palestinians are treated as second-class citizens. And as someone who lived in South Africa for a year while I was making a movie there back in the mid-1980s, uh, I can say that when I visit the state of Israel, it looks more and more like apartheid South Africa. So the phenomena of the rise of delusional, xenophobic, conspiracy theory-laden uh, movements with religious spin to them is universal. It's what Iran is about. It's what Saudi Arabia and the Islamists that it backed all over the world through its Wahhabism exporting radical, violent Islam, which it continues to do to this day, uh, is all about. So we're part of a global phenomenon. But that said, the evangelical white group of voters who supported Trump are his core of his core support. People talk about hillbilly elegy and this sort of theory of working class America and blue collar America being left behind. And yeah, that's a contributing factor, as is racism and the rest of it. But the core of his support is delusional white evangelical Christianity. So what I have to explain to my questioners in the secular media and often political operatives as well who want to have my opinion because I've been around the block. I knew people like President Reagan and Jack Kemp and the Bush family and all the rest when I was a religious right activist myself, is why is their support so unshakable? So let me explain very briefly here. It's simple. It's not political support. It is support for a religious worldview. They have made Trump into a theological issue about the return of Christ. There is a group of evangelicals 
in the Pentecostal movement and elsewhere who believe that Trump somehow fulfills prophecy of being perhaps an unjust king, perhaps a wicked man, but very much like some of the kings in the Old Testament stories, has been raised up nevertheless by God to do a job. And that is to purify America from whether it's transgenders or gay people or uh, purify America by appointing Supreme Court justices that will overturn Roe v. Wade. This prepares the way for the return of Christ. So showing them better facts or that he's told a thousand verifiable lies at this point, literally, or showing them that a $15 an hour minimum wage is something that's good or that Universal health care is what Americans want, or that college debt is crushing the millennial generation and that relief of college debt would be so wonderful, or that we really need a genuine infrastructure program. <clears throat> None of this matters because the certainty addiction brain of all fundamentalists is delusional. It changes in the same way that drug addicts on opioid uh, abuse change. It isn't a question of choice. It's the actual neural pathways in our brain are reshaped by belief sometime to the point where you have this kind of epigenetic inheritance among evangelical groups where with their mother's milk, evangelical children are taught to reject the world's wisdom, i.e. science and facts, as fake news. The real news is in the Bible whether it's about creation or Genesis or the fact Noah's Ark really existed or whatever it may be, male, female, sexual relationships, and so forth. So having set up a totally alternative universe, you have to understand that evangelical Christianity itself is like birtherism. It is a conspiracy theory that believes the whole world, its science, its facts, its scholarship, its academic elites, the media, common sense, all of this is somehow a conspiracy of Satan to distract real believers on track to get to heaven when they die, to receive Jesus when he comes back to a more perfect world where women's rights have been stripped away, where gays are back in the closet or dead, where for a lot of them it's a white Protestant middle class culture. So get it through your heads, everybody. Better arguments are not going to win the day. What is going to win is if we can convince people that these religiously fanatical certainty addicts are dangerous and Trump is unleashing them. If you want to know where they'd like to take America, watch Handmaid's Tale. There may be details in that that are wrong, but that's their idea of a theocratic heaven on earth. <clears throat> Logic has nothing to do with it. What we need to do is talk to independent voters people who think both parties are the same, which is utter nonsense, and get their apathetic distance from the political process cured by showing them who these evangelical voters really are. They're delusional fanatics. They're as delusional and fanatical <clears throat> and demented as Donald Trump. They like him because he is an image, a secular image, albeit, a philandering image, albeit, but an image of delusional delusional worldview. And so they look to him as a fellow delusional conspiracy theorist who marches to the same drummer they do, which is alternative fact, delusion, lies, accepted as truth. Evangelicals think from God. Donald Trump thinks from his own ego, which is all he cares about. He worships himself. But the delusion cuts across both. Trump and his core followers. They are deluded. They are, in fact, crazy. Thank you. My name is Frank Schaefer.